The West Penra Papers A Journey Through the Multiverse The Second Level of Learning HTTP colon slash slash westpenry.com Appendix A, Paper Number 1 Updates on the Remarkable Michael Lee Hill Case, Part 1 Proof of UFOs over Lake Erie By Wes Penra, Thursday, November 9, 2012 Part 3 3. The Timeline of UFO Sightings Over Lake Erie, Starting in the 1800s Date September 22 to 25, 2004 Strange Rumors of Northern Ohio Activity By Kenny Young UFO at Fuse.net 10-2-4 Unusual Situation Reported in Northern Ohio Apparently on Wednesday morning, September 22, numerous callers to Cleveland, Ohio radio station 1100 WTAM reported a rainbow-like aerial situation similar to a sundog. The situation complicates, however, as others begin describing unusual contrails, jet scrambles and other military activity all across northern Ohio. One caller, Ammon, describes an unusual light seen the night before September 22 while driving home from Detroit around 1 a.m. while another caller, Kevin, claims the similar sighting of a bluish-green light around 10.35 p.m. on Route 8 near the Stowe, Ohio area, north of Akron. At daybreak the morning of September 22, northeastern Ohio skies were allegedly ripped with jet vapor trails. One caller, Don, is a truck driver with a route between Cleveland and Youngstown, and alleges that his GPS, Global Positioning System, that pinpoints his mapping location on a laptop computer, began malfunctioning between 8 and 9 a.m., although working flawlessly beforehand. Stranger still, another caller named Dave claimed that Route 12, a south-slash-north road out of Fostoria, Ohio, was blocked by tons of army trucks and traffic was being diverted. This activity was briefly referenced on the Cleveland UFO list by George Pindro, but with no new information. Secondly, I did receive three email advisements regarding this activity from various contacts, along with one copied message from June that states, I talked with my mom today, and she told me that on Channel 19 at 5 p.m., Wednesday, September 22, the TV news anchor said that there were hundreds of reports of UFOs all over the lakefront area of Ohio. He said that after the commercial breaks he would give the details. My mom was very curious and waited to hear the news. When the news came back on, nothing. So the story was squashed. I talked to a few people at work today, and yes, they had heard about the sightings. Everyone was talking about it. So lots of people here in Ohio heard about it before the news was suppressed. According to my mom, the TV anchor said that people saw what looked like a huge cloud with rainbow colors along with many UFOs that were not disguising themselves as clouds. I also learned that fighter jets were sent out after them. Note, I do not know June who copied me on her comments to a few other researchers, but she signed her name with the addition of in the light, and I cannot vouch for her comments ky. Thirdly, a comment about the WTAM radio activity was filed to the National UFO Reporting Center, NUFORC, website, but also containing no new information. Further, Mrs. Donnie Blessing, Southern Ohio State Director for MUFON, Mutual UFO Network, spoke with a gentleman from Cleveland named Ken who contacted the Cincinnati UFO Hotline, 513 to 588, 4548, on September 28 to advise of a UFO sighting in Canada on September 21. While taking the information, Ken advised that his wife knew of the strange reports on WTAM radio station on September 22, and further informed of UFOs and numerous, presumably, responding military helicopters seen near the Perry Nuclear Power Station. This specific detail has been considered most intriguing. At this time, we know of no substantive information to link this reference of a UFO situation near the Perry Nuclear Power Station to the September 22 activity reported by WTAM Radio. Oddly, 
there was previous UFO activity reported on the record by a Lake County law officer referenced in conjunction with the Perry Nuclear Facility in June of 2004. Date November 27, 2006 Lake Erie, hot spot for UFO sightings? On the shores of Lake Erie, oh, dash it's become known as the Lake Erie UFO phenomenon. Recent sightings of unidentified objects are sparking new interest in the subject. So NBC24 launched a probe into the area's close encounters. Whether you're a skeptic, or a sworn believer, you'll want to see what we found. Ufologist Aaron Clark is among the area's top investigators. He showed NBC24 video footage of a recent sighting a dark object that appears to dart back and forth in the sky. It's very strange as it moves, Clark's tells NBC24. It almost looks like it's changing shape. Clark says efforts to identify another glowing object have been unsuccessful. It's this very strange odd-shaped, almost boomerang-shaped object that flies in front of the moon. It's unknown. All we have is the video. It's not anything that's a conventional type of aircraft. Clark says Ohio's Lake Erie coastline is, is a well-known hotspot for UFO sightings. Ufologist Richard Lee has been examining reports for decades. Ohio's been famous for the possibility of the connection of the UFO subject from way back in the 1950s, he told NBC24 recently during a meeting of ufologists. This is the oldest continuously operating group as far as we know in the world. Lee admits most of the incidents the Cleveland Ufology Project has investigated are of this world. It might be atmospheric, or it might be misidentified. But the trained UFO investigator says there are incidents that still can't be unexplained. Lee says a police chase with a UFO depicted in the 1970s Steven Spielberg film Close Encounters of the Third Kind was inspired by an actual event that happened right here in Ohio. The chase started on the morning of April 17, 1966. Several police crews followed an object they could not identify. Lee says the deputy who first encountered the object described what he saw. We usually say, how big was it at arm's length? He said it was like a house 50 feet over your head, and that started the chase that ended up in Pennsylvania they exceeded 100 miles an hour in part of the pursuit. Police followed it into Pennsylvania and eventually ran out of gas. It was a sighting that looked like a movie scene that make Clark a believer. It was a large object bigger than a house that had three rows of white lights and it was rotating about 500 feet away, he says. Nearly 22 years later, in 1988, the Coast Guard responded to a call of a sighting. NBC24 confirmed a Coast Guard report, in which crews described an unidentified large object, appeared to land on the Lake Erie ice, before it vanished. Unexplained. It's like there's no definitive way to define what the phenomenon was. Lee says. It's just one of those mysteries. If UFOs are watching over Lake Erie, the real mystery is why? Area ufologists have heard several theories over the years. The lake is being monitored by somebody from elsewhere possibly. People think there are underwater bases, Clark says. Rob Packard. Here I'm going to stop again for a while with my timeline presentation, because Rob Packard brings up a pretty interesting subject at the end when he's talking about underwater bases. In fact, Packard is not the only one suggesting this, and we're going to discuss that some more later on. The next article, which will bring us up to present time, talks about it as well. Sunday, September 18, 2011 does Lake Erie harbor an underwater UFO base? Around 9 p.m. on Saturday, September 17, 2011 unknown airborne phenomenon was observed over Lake Erie near western Erie County, Pennsylvania by two households. Two residents of Japan Street in Mill Creek Township had stepped outside for a smoke when they noticed six orange glowing objects in the sky, car alarms and police sirens had gone off at the same time as the incident and the pair went over to their neighbor's house to verify what they were seeing. Here is his testimony as per the MUFON database. It was approximately 9 to 9 10 p.m. My neighbor and his friend knocked on my door and started to tell me about these abnormal lights they saw in the sky. Then we saw one orangish light in the sky. 
It was north slash northwest from my house, so it appeared to be above Lake Erie. The light was visible for about a minute. It appeared to be moving west, left in the sky, slightly, the light started to fade a little bit, then completely disappeared. During this time the light moved up and down slightly. The light was orange, but didn't appear to be a fireball. It was not making any sounds that we could hear. My neighbor and his friend then told me that maybe four to five minutes before, they stepped outside their house to smoke. They saw six orange lights, like the one I saw. The lights appeared to be north slash northwest, again appearing to be above Lake Erie, they ran into their front yard to get a better look. The six lights appeared to be in some sort of formation, moving together. During this time multiple car alarms in our neighborhood alarmed. I heard these while I was inside my house, the car alarms were on different streets. After about a minute or two, they came and knocked on my door, that is when I saw the one light I previously mentioned. When I first saw the object, I wasn't sure what it was, planes usually appear higher in the sky. Also I've never seen a plane with an orange light like that. I really couldn't think of any logical explanations especially after the story my neighbor and his friend told me of seeing six lights. We all found it to be slightly odd that there were a number of car alarms that had gone off as well. I have no clue what it was, but it was definitely out of the ordinary. The witness had contacted me on Facebook within minutes of the sighting asking if I had heard anything about the phenomenon, his description of the object was similar to the UFO filmed over Moscow on September 9 of this year. When the witness saw this video he said the object was very very similar to what he encountered on the 17th. Could this be the same or same type of object? Southern Lake Erie has been a hot spot of UFO and aerial phenomenon lately. One of the chapters in my latest book Erie Erie, Tales of the Unexplained from Northwestern Pennsylvania, The History Press, July 2011, is titled A Hidden Underwater UFO Base in Lake Erie. In this chapter I recount the mass of UFO sightings above and below the waters of Lake Erie within the past few years. Massive objects being reported crashing into the waters on the lake's southern shore, an amazing incident of a large UFO landing on the icy lake that launched scout ships witnessed and recorded by coast guards, and many more. On August 8th of this year, a fireball was detected by all sky cameras from the Southern Ontario Meteor Network at 1.22 a.m. EDT According to Space.com, it was picked up over Lake Erie and proceeded south-southeast over Ohio, said Bill Cook, head of NASA's Meteoroid Environments Office at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, all of the meteor was last tracked north of Gustavus, Ohio, and the potential impact zone for meteorite fragments is a region east of Cleveland. A similar object impacted in Lake Erie in 2008. On November 13, 2008 the Ashtabula Star Beacon reported that multiple witnesses from Ashtabula to Madison, Ohio had heard and witnessed a large object crash into Lake Erie's southern shore. At first police and local authorities thought it to be an aircraft, but Madison Township Police SGT. Rick Barson is quoted in the Ashtabula Star Beacon as saying, we had enough information from two people in separate places that seemed to have seen the same thing, but we had trouble getting a good description that would fit the type of craft we believed this plane could be. Later NASA would claim that the object entering the lake was a meteorite, but that is not what the witnesses saw, they saw a craft of some sort. Lake Erie has a long history of unexplained aerial and underwater phenomenon. For centuries Lake Erie has been host to a phenomena that many in past eras have called wizard lights. In the December 12, 1867 issue of the Brooklyn Eagle there is an article A Curious Phenomenon on Lake Erie in which is recounted the instance of a burning ghost ship seen off Erie. The writer reports that local sailors have been seeing these lights for over 50 years throughout the lake. When rescuers would venture off toward the burning lights, they would simply vanish. Soon the sailors would no more go to the rescue when these lights appeared, they knew that they were something odd, something otherworldly. Recently places on the western part of the lake such as Sandusky and Cleveland have been hotbeds of UFO activity and similar lights have been filmed, making them a YouTube sensation. 
These UFOs have been investigated by world-famous UFO researchers and even the focus of such cable television shows such as UFO Hunters and UFO Files. Cleveland ufologist Aaron Clark in the March 8, 2007 Cleveland Plain Dealer declares that some believe there's a UFO base on the bottom of the lake. After compiling incidents from MUFON, eyewitnesses, and other UFO databases, I have noticed that there have been an alarming amount of diverse UFO sightings above and below the surface of Lake Erie within the past decade. Does Lake Erie play host to some sort of underwater UFO slash USO base? Something is happening below its murky waves, something unexplained. Michael Lee Hill started seeing UFOs over the lake around 2003, and his story started taking off the next year, when the following article was published in the Free Times. That's no moon who, or what, is buzzing Northeast Ohio? Free Times Volume 15, Issue 21 published September 26, 2007 Many uncrazy Clevelanders have seen strange lights in the sky. Who, or what, is buzzing Northeast Ohio? By John Lasker To suggest that Northeast Ohio could be witness to the next mass UFO sighting does not officially make you a member of the tinfoil hat crowd. If you believe even just a few of the witnesses, Cleveland and its surrounding communities might already be a hot spot. During the previous two years, the Cleveland Ufology Project, considered the oldest of its kind on this side of the globe, has documented 20 credible sightings. The 2005 documentary Dan Aykroyd, Unplugged on UFOs highlighted the peculiar lights over Lake Erie near East Lake, where witnesses reported their latest sighting just this past June. Earlier this year, an orb was videotaped over the Key Bank Tower during a peace rally, and the incident made it on the CBS Nightly News. The hype continues, literally hundreds of thousands have downloaded internet videos of Northeast Ohio UFOs. The Cleveland Office of Homeland Security has investigated. And one of the East Lake UFO witnesses says he's signed a contract with a history channel for a documentary. If you take all of the people in Ohio who are interested in this subject, I bet half of them are from that part of the state, says Central Ohio-based William E. Jones, State Director for Ohio MUFON, or Mutual UFO Network. A lot of folks up there have seen things over the years. More people are interested up there. I don't know why. Sam Phillips has long been a fixture of Cleveland's music scene. He's an accomplished drummer and hand snapper and appeared on the Arsenio Hall show. When interviewed for this story, however, he was homeless and sleeping at the homes of friends and family. Phillips taped a strange light spinning and hovering over the Key Bank Tower on March 10, during a peace rally. This is not about me, says Phillips, who admits he has become obsessed with what he saw that night. There's a pattern here. There's a riddle here. And I want answers. I want an explanation. He believes it wasn't coincidence the sighting took place over a peace rally. During the sighting, he recalls saying that our brothers and sisters are going to come down from the universe and humble our ass. Philip's story, however, is but a sidebar in the current wave of Northeast Ohio UFO mania. Taking center stage is Lake Erie, and Michael Lee Hill of East Lake. Hill, like Phillips, is a musician. In 2001, Grammy Award winner and guitar legend Steve Vai picked Hill as the winner of a national guitar contest. Hill is gregarious, upbeat, and likable. He's unconventional and complex. He's certain that the UFOs he has seen are targeting him. I've had contact my whole life, he says. I remember asking my mother, why do Santa's elves keep visiting me? The recent visitation started in earnest five years ago not far from the coal-burning power plant, he says. While walking on the beach, not far from his home, Hill said he witnessed a top hat-shaped craft hovering and pulsating over the shoreline. This same area is also famous in UFO lore for a 1988 encounter documented by the Coast Guard. Hill started taking a video camera to the lakefront. Since then he's captured scores of bright lights that appear to hover over Lake Erie. He's uploaded many of his videos to YouTube, and those caught the attention of David Sarada, who directed the Ackroyd documentary. 
Hill created the music for Sarada's latest project, From Here to Andromeda. Hill also says he recently signed a contract for a History Channel project, but the channel did not return Free Times calls. I really do consider myself a spiritual messenger, I know it sounds freaky, says Hill, adding that the UFO filmed over the Key Bank Tower is one of the same orbs he captured over Lake Erie. There's a huge story unfolding here. I think they're absolutely sending us a message. I believe they are here to help us become a galactic society. At the other end of the spectrum is East Lake resident Gary Strauss, who says adamantly, I'm not one of those UFO people. He's a chemist and a supervisor at a local laboratory. He's lived in his home on the lake since 1984, in the same neighborhood as Hill, though they've never met. Early on the morning of June 21, Strauss and his son saw four bright lights, shaped like the tip of a Sharpe marker, high above the water. The lights were in a line parallel with the shoreline, positioned at 11 o'clock and 30 degrees above the horizon. Then one vanished. Then another. Soon all four were gone. Suddenly, they reappeared in the shape of a diamond. Then they went flat again. This went on for more than an hour. He called the East Lake police and they dispatched an officer. Strauss remembers the officer saying, What is that? The following day, his son checked the internet for lights over Lake Erie and found one of Hill's videos. He recalls his son shouting, That's it. That's what we saw. But unlike other Lake Erie witnesses, Strauss doesn't believe the lights are extraterrestrial. He guesses they're the result of government or aerospace industry experiments with new technology. They're bouncing radar off some type of object, he speculates. Some form of radar reflection technology. I'm just making an educated guess. Nevertheless, he's intrigued. I look outside a lot more. I want to see it again, says Strauss. This time, I'm going to have my camera. But he rejects the suggestion that it's anything more than curiosity, no. I'm not obsessive. Absolutely not. The East Lake police actually had two witnesses that night. A detective, who asked not to be named, told the Free Times that he too saw the lights, but from a different vantage point. The East Lake Police asked the Cleveland Office of Homeland Security to look into the sighting, and the detective says he was told later that on the night of the sighting, the Canadian Coast Guard was near the opposite side of the lake searching for a man who had been reported missing. A Canadian Coast Guard helicopter dropped flares, connected to miniature parachutes, over the water. Later it was discovered the man had drowned. Strauss finds this implausible, believes the lights appeared in a straight line then vanished, then reappeared in a diamond formation. The Bush administration reportedly has funneled billions to the aerospace industry to develop space-based weapons under the guise of missile defense. Secret military space plane programs are believed to have been revived as well. Another possibility are LAGIOs, or laser geodynamics satellites. Publicly, the government says two are in orbit, and both are roughly the size of a basketball. They are made of brass and partially covered with a retroreflection material that returns light in the direction it comes from, similar to a road sign. There's also NASA's Glenn Research Center at the Plum Brook site in Sandusky. The site is home to the world's largest space environment simulation chamber. That chamber will test NASA's new spacecraft, Orion, which will take the U.S. back to the moon. Recent upgrades to the Plum Brook site will also allow it to test next-generation lunar landers, robotic systems and military and commercial aircraft, according to NASA's website. So here I come walking out of the TV station one night in November maybe a decade ago after our early evening newscast, says Ted Henry of New Channel 5. In perfect formation there were five large objects flying smoothly in my direction. It was stunning. What I saw was the undersides of five flat objects flying in exact formation. The front two were enormous, maybe the size of several football fields, and the three trailing were smaller, flying in a slightly irregular pattern. What do I think they were? All I can really tell you is what I saw. Henry has talked about his sighting many times on the air. He puts the experience this way, one thing is certain, 
for people who see something in the sky, as I did over Cleveland years ago, it can be a life-changing experience. There was also a YouTube video posted not too long ago with sightings more recent than this last one, but it has now been taken down, unfortunately. Nevertheless, I think the reader gets the picture. In part two of this appendix, we are going to discuss Michael's experiences in much more detail, and they don't end with just a few lights over Lake Erie, nowadays commonly known as the East Lake UFOs. The lights he and other have seen over the lake is for Michael only the absolute beginning of a much bigger story that was unfolding before his very eyes as time went by, and it's far from ended yet. In my first article about Michael, I spent a lot of time with Bill Burns' UFO Hunters documentary, which was more or less the highlight of that article. Now it's time to bring that further. However, it's interesting to hear what one of Bill Burns' team members had to say about Michael and his experiences in the following video clip. Mike's footage is really impressive simply because of the size of Lake Erie and the fact that it's a no-fly zone. There's nothing around for something like 60 miles. It really makes these lights that Michael Lee Hill is videotaping very remarkable. But are these objects new, or have they been seen before? March 4, 1988. According to the Cleveland Plain dealer, Sheila Baker sees several small triangular objects shooting out of a huge metallic gray football-shaped object descending over Lake Erie. The U.S. Coast Guard even witnesses this event and makes a written report. Quote, the smaller objects began hovering in the area where the large object landed. They appeared to be scouting the area. They were never able to fully resolve this event. The description of these objects approaching the lake is eerily similar to Michael's footage from August 18, 2006. But Michael's encounters go further back than the team realizes. Now, let's move on to Michael himself and what he, and others, including media people, have to say about what he has experienced, in the second and last part of this series. <laughs> 